Hey everyone, and welcome back to the X Ring. On today's episode, what I'm going to do is compare two knives here. One of these is a real, genuine, authentic Microtech, and the other one is a knockoff that you would buy on like uh, Alibaba or DH Gate. Can you guys tell just by looking? Well, unfortunately, neither can a lot of other people. And if you're supporting that counterfeit industry and ordering something uh, from a Chinese company or coming from overseas, that is a huge issue in the United States, you know, with your premium brands, you know, such as Rolex and, uh, you know, even Oakley, any of those like that. And unfortunately, there's a lot of unsuspecting buyers who think they're getting a good deal uh, because maybe they're not familiar with the brand or something like that. But what we want to do is do some of the tests that I normally do in my reviews, you know, like pounding it through a two by four and we'll see how the fake holds up. I don't know which one it is. Maybe you guys can tell. Can we tell? Let's get started. All right, guys. So the one that we're using today is supposed to be a knockoff or a counterfeit X85. So you guys might recognize this. This is from the test that I do where I threw it in the parking lot and I ran over it with the lawnmower. This is an Ultratech. So this is like the number one knife for Microtech. It's been in production for forever, okay? Um, and then what they did was they introduced the X85, UTX85, which is supposed to be 85% of the size of the Ultratech. Now, if you didn't know any better and you went to a gun show and there was not an authentic Microtech, you would actually see it is smaller than an Ultratech. So one would be led to believe that this would be a UTX-85. However, comparing it to a real one, you'll also see that it is the wrong size. It is too tall, it is too large, but without a real one to compare it to, you would think that it was an X-85. Let's hold them side by side so you guys can kind of see how close they got to replicating this. The screws are right, the logo was even been copied, even on the pocket clip. Now, one of the telltale signs on a clone is this shiny hardware, okay? Uh, you will not find chromed or shiny hardware on a Microtech unless it is a custom, and you'll probably have a high polished blade for that. You'll also notice that this is the wrong glass break. This was a glass break that they used a long time ago, but it was never that shiny. The new ones have been replaced with this. They even go so far as to clone the logo. One of the other things you can notice is you can feel the laser engravings on it, whereas you're typically not going to be able to feel it on an authentic or a genuine Microtech. As far as the blade, they'll even go so far as to mark it with LMAX or 204P or M390, and that's not what you're getting. I've played around with these enough to know that it is some cheap steel that they're just laser markings to make you believe uh, that it is an authentic Microtech. They even copy the X button. And here's the X button on an authentic one. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm not going to mess up this X85. I actually just borrowed it uh, to show for a comparison. I've done enough, and if you haven't seen an X85 or UTX85 uh, torture test, you can go over to Is Your Six Covered. He has quite a few as well, so go check his channel out if you haven't seen it. So the first thing we're gonna do is I have a target here, a piece of paper, and this is, this is like brand new. It is a counterfeit, but it's, oh, it can cut. Yeah, there it goes. But it's just not, it's not as sharp as a true Microtech would be from the factory. Sharp enough to cut you, sharp enough for you not to know the difference. All right, guys, we're getting close now. It takes a long time to hack through that uh, using a little pocket knife. It's no different than using the Microtech. Like I said, it's just a, a blade that we're trying to cut down the wood. And guys, that's it. Because now I can just, just do that with it. So that's pretty much the cut test for that. Still working. All right, next what we'll do is the baton test, just straight through. We did this with the Ultratech. I think this is what killed my hammer last time. Yes, it actually worked pretty well. Still working.
That's it. Okay, so just doing a nail test, done, we are done. And I did not get any wood in here, you guys saw where I knocked it all off. And what we'll do is we'll actually see what failed on it. The blade is still straight, we're at lockout. Yep, so it did all the other tests pretty well. Did not pass the nail test. Now remember, this is a clone, okay? So what I'll do is I'm gonna do the exact same nail test. I do have an Ultratech that I don't mind doing it with, which was All right, guys, so I do have this Ultratech from my other videos. Um, I, let's compare the blade length so that we can kind of show you. This is an authentic uh, Microtech. So we will be going through the exact same length or further. And this is the hole from the one that I just tried on the clone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go, I guess, right here. So nothing changes, same piece of wood. You know what, I'll go right beside of it. But far enough to where it's not gonna say, okay, well that's an issue. Okay, so that is all the way through. All right, I tapped it just like that. Now that's a real Microtech, that's the difference. So, you know, my question to everyone is, is yeah, this looks good. It looks like a Microtech, but let's say this costs you $60, okay? This is a disposable item. This is something that will last you a lifetime with a true warranty. You guys have seen me do these nail tests over and over. Um, just to prove a point, I'm gonna do it again. If I have enough energy left. And we'll go right here. Let me get this out of the way. The blade's sticking out, so I'm trying to be careful not to poke myself on that one. There it is, all the way through. The reason I do that is it gets any wood chips out of this blood groove here. No comparison, guys, okay? So all we had to do was a nail test on this. The cutting test and all that doesn't really show much because it's just a blade cutting through wood, but it's this actuation, the mechanism on the inside that makes all the difference. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open this up and figure out what failed. and Maybe we'll have a better idea of what's going on inside. So here's another clone. This is a good clone of a Halo 5. I'll show you guys that it is functioning. It is not a Microtech. This is a clone, a fake, okay? So the first thing that you notice is when you fire it, watch this, ready? 
What? It's like one of them trick knives. Okay, so now it locks out. I'm gonna show you that again. So when you fire it, that button doesn't come up all the time. Listen to this, how much slop is in there. So let's see if I can get this into here. There it goes. You, you see that guys? We did a nail test on this on the Halo and we used a Hellhound blade. And so I figured it would do this. Someone did get taken. They thought it was a real one. And let's try it again. Here we go. All right, button is locked out. We'll even pull on the button or pull on the blade. And here we go, ready? See that guys? So this is what you're getting when you buy a clone. It looks like the real thing and it might make you look cool for just a little bit. Um, if you buy one to think it's, pretend it's a halo, but this is not Microtech. This is not Microtech quality. It's like one of those trick knives, you know what I mean? <laughs> Watch it lock out. Oh. Ah. <laughs> now, it says it's an LMAX blade. Do you really think that's LMAX? I think not. All right, so this is not an authentic Microtech, so I don't know if my tool bit's going to work to, re to get this apart. Oh, I think it will. Okay, so now what we're going to do, let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open this up like I would any other knife. So it had oil on it. There's the button. There's the slider. I think I'm seeing what's going on. I think there's an issue right here. Let me see if this will come out. Okay, so there's the back of their blade. Yeah, so we have a def deformation or something going on right here. Um, it has seized up completely just from those tests. So from this point right here, it's actually locked in place. It's, it's really not wanting to slide. So this is junk, this would be destroyed. As far as internally, it is very similar to the Ultratech or the X85. I will tell you these parts right here in pieces for the rear lock, which is extremely important because those need to be hardened. Those look like stamped steel. So this is the clone up top. You see those stamped sheet metal locks. They're not even radius or rounded. Look at the size of the genuine Microtex. See that? I think this one got bent in the test. You can kind of see how that works in that pocket. Here's the front one. So there it is. That's what you get. Cheap junk. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that test. This was one of the best clones I've ever come across, and that's why I wanted to test it. Uh, but once again, it falls short of a true Microtech. That's what you're paying for is that blade steel, that quality, that made in the USA. And you guys saw just with the nail test, it did not pass. It failed miserably, could not hold a candle to the Microtech themselves. So guys, hope you like these reviews of these Microtechs. These are the Combat Troodons. I know it's a different knife, but man, these things just work and work and work. You'll recognize this one from the burn test. This is the same one that was on fire. Nothing's been changed on it. The only thing I did was spray some oil on it. She was good to go. So guys, hope you like these knife reviews. Like, share, and subscribe. We'll talk to you soon. I'm getting ready to start a Patreon account. So for all my subscribers uh, that would like to see extra content, come on over and check it out. Guys, have a good one. Talk to you soon.